Hello everybody, happy Friday. Welcome back to another Mover Mailbag. We're gonna take a look at your questions. No uh, uh, physical mail today, uh, but if you wanna send me something, PO Box 8594, Mandeville, Louisiana, 70470. Just let me know if you're gonna, so I know to uh, go check the post office. Uh, but today we've got some emails we'll take a look at answering your questions. Uh, Mover Mailbag at cwlemoyne.com. All right, so this first question comes from Ian from Australia. Hi from Australia, Muva. Just finished your latest helicopter vlog video related to manifold pressure. Has the maintenance team checked the manifold gauge installation yet? Check gauge calibration, check pressure impulse line and connection points are clear. Check connections and line is leak-free engine and gauge. Uh, the gauge line and connections are subject to significant vibration during flight. Any leaks will significantly influence the measured value. Unable to build vacuum. If the rotor rigging has been checked, engine rebuilt, checked or max replaced, feel free to forward to the owner. Power regards, Ian. Well, Ian, appreciate the uh, email and the suggestions. I think they have. Uh, I have no direct contact with maintenance. Um, as far as I know, they did. They checked the gauge. The gauge was working. Uh, I know that if you check, if you do a uh pressure check just it's sitting on the ground it and putting the correct altimeter setting it matches so um i i don't know i'll be honest i i, I don't know uh, i don't think it's the gauge i think there's a power issue but um it you know I, that was one of the first things i asked was whether the gauge was bad but just one of those things they've already sent the engine off um, so at this point, I think they're just going to try to chase that down, but, uh, thanks for the email. Appreciate the suggestion. All right. This next one comes from Siervo. Dear mover, Siervo here, Airbus driver and DCS fighter pilot on my free time. First of all, thanks for caring for the community and keep the good work. I've already read a couple of your books too. You are my absolutely favorite fighter pilot on YouTube. Oh, thank you. We do have a technical question for you. Apparently, new storm clouds are coming to DCS, and we've started a discussion about weather radar images on fighter jets. I'd like to know how much of this water inside the clouds is reflected by the radar, how is the representation of water droplets in the MFD, and finally, do clouds obstruct radar energy and avoid detection of a target? Thanks again. Wish you safe flights. So, <laughs> that sounds like an ace combat question. No. Uh, you can't hide in clouds, and they don't obscure radar. So, the thing about a fighter radar, it's a pulse Doppler radar, and it is looking for moving targets. Uh, it's looking for a Doppler shift, if you will. Um, so it rejects things that don't move. Um, and so that's kind of one of those things that unless you're in a ground map mode, uh, we use snowplow uh, for a poor man's weather radar for both the air to ground radar and the Hornet and the Viper. Uh, it's not seeing the clouds because uh, it's looking for moving targets. So it's rejecting anything that's stationary or not moving at all. Um, I've never, I mean, I've, I've flown around storm clouds. I've never seen any noise or returns or anything like that uh, in the clouds. I'm, I guess if you had a, a dense enough clouds with hail and other objects, you might be able to obscure stuff, but uh, it'll only just decrease the range. It's not going to, you're not going to be able to hide from it just by going in the cloud. So, because uh, we do radar trail through the weather all the time and never had a problem. So, um, there is no representation of water droplets in the MFD. Uh, and that's the thing, you know, when you talk about an airliner's radar, uh, that is, it doesn't have the, um, it's not looking for moving targets. It's just looking for Doppler returns, which is different than actually trying to track moving targets and stuff like that. So thanks for the question. Uh, this Q and A, hello, I'd like to ask about your thoughts on aces, both in real life and in video games like Ace Combat. In Ace Combat, narratively important, Aces are basically demigods that can change the course of a battle or even a war. How does that compare with real-life Aces or Ace-tier pilots who just haven't had to shoot down that many planes? What would be your thoughts about facing a real-life Ace or an Ace Combat demigod Ace? Thanks for taking my question. Um, well, so in 2021, there are none. I mean, the last air-to-air -air kill was a Hornet guy. Um, who shot down, uh, I don't know, MiG-23 or something like that, some MiG in Syria. Just, there are none. I mean, you gotta have five kills to be an ace. Um, so yeah, it's cool, it's a good bar story, but 
I mean, I, I, other than, you know, being, being cool, there is no demigod status or anything like that. Most fighter pilots have never been in an air to air engagement, myself included in real life. Uh, and even fewer have even had an air to air kill. As far as your other question about uh, demigod or facing an ace, you wouldn't even know. I mean, how would you know that that's an ace combat video game thing. You wouldn't know and you wouldn't care. You would do your tactics. I mean, you compartmentalize that stuff. It's not, there is no hype or anything like that. You just, you fly your, your best 1v1 game plan, or hopefully you don't get to the 1v1 side and you're doing your other tactics, BVR or as a section or two ship or four ship or whatever prior to that. So you never get to that point where you're down to 1v1. Because remember, BFM is a building block. It's basic fighter maneuvers. It's, it's to get you to another point and it's a self-defense thing once you... Uh, get close in, but it is not our game plan. We don't go out expecting to dogfight because we want to handle things at range. So, interesting question. This comes from Mark. I recently stumbled upon your YouTube channel. Great stuff all around. Thank you. I've been an aviation Air Force enthusiast my whole life. Started flying, started flight lessons at 612, soloed on a 16th birthday, PPL at 17, the whole deal. Growing up, all I ever wanted to do was fly fighters. Having just watched your five minutes about becoming a fighter pilot video, I really wish I had that info before I made the decision not to pursue the career path or at least try. I heard the myth about vision a billion times, even from an Air Force Academy grad with whom I met to discuss the career path. I never knew waivers, waivers were a thing or even an option. Knowing I could never fly fighters and being reasonably sure I could never get a pilot slot because of my vision led me to pursue other endeavors. No complaints or whining about that. Just wanted to shoot a message to say what you're doing is great and incredibly valuable. Keep it up. I'm sure there are thousands of people who benefit tremendously from the info you share. Yeah. I mean, that's just the thing. There's a lot of misinformation. People self-eliminate. So make them tell you no. That's that's what I always say. Get to the point where there are no more options because you've exhausted them all. And then, you know, you can say, okay, I tried. But don't don't self-eliminate and don't don't take, you know, word of mouth as gospel. This comes from Artur. Hi, I've been watching your videos for some time and you helped me to rediscover my love for warbirds. I've been wondering what your opinion on civilians, pilots buying and flying jet warbirds. Some people interested in fighter jets buy a trainer like an L-39, later upgrade to a retired jet like a Draken, MiG-21 or MiG-29. God, MiG-29, that'd be awesome. Uh, either because of circumstances, a lot of smaller countries have very little pilot slots in the Air Force or worldview such as pacifism or anti-militarism. Your thoughts? Uh, thank you for making great content. Sorry for the grammar. Yeah, I think it's cool. Uh, I hope they get the training. You know, I hope to get the training that they need, but yeah, I think it's awesome. I mean, hell yeah. Buy if, if I had the, you know, if I were a billionaire, I'd buy one too. Uh, this comes from Jason. Hey, Mover, have you heard the story of the enlisted Marine that took an A4M Skyhawk for a joyride back in 1984? Uh, he got off with a four-month sentence time served and other than honorable discharge. Do you think someone could get away with that kind of stunt today? Um... Yeah, I, I do remember that story, and I think the guy ended up becoming like a test pilot or something. He actually ended up going on to greater things. Uh, could they get away with something like that now? Well, um, there was that uh, was a Q400 in Seattle. The guy crashed uh, where he went joyriding. Uh, but as far as a military fighter jet, no. I mean, you might. You know, if you could get to that point, you might. Uh, but, I mean... <sighs> You'd have an alert scramble probably, and I mean, if you didn't get shot down and you made it home safely, I don't think four months would be what you'd get. I think you'd, you'd probably have a much more severe sentence, uh, especially with all the classified stuff now. I just, uh, I think we live in a different age. A lot of stuff that, that they could get away with and only go four months back then just wouldn't fly today. All right, so that's it for today's Mover Mailbag, really short uh, mailbag. If you want to send me something, movermailbag at cwlemoyne.com. Stay tuned. In the next uh, day or two, Gonky and I are going to do a review on the trailer for uh, this new movie called The Air Force, which is about the Malaysian Air Force. Uh, really awesome looking trailer that uh, we'll bring Gonky in because he flew with the Malaysians and has some good insights. So uh, if you haven't already, please consider supporting Fights On via our Indiegogo page. Uh, and if you don't want to support that, just directly support F uh, Folds of Honor. They provide educational scholarships for uh, children of wounded or fallen uh, in action. So one more thing before I go. Uh, a lot of you have said you're no longer receiving uh, notifications or subscription stuff. 
uh, or seeing the channel at all. I know analytics are down like 60%. I have not stopped uploading videos. It's the same frequency as before, but for whatever reason, the channel's just fallen out of the graces of the YouTube algorithm. So uh, let me know in the comments if you're no longer seeing this, although I guess if you're in the comments, you're probably seeing this. But if you've kind of been like, where the hell's the channel been? Uh, just let me know. Uh, I've reached out to YouTube. They've said it's normal and fine. But I mean, we're down like 90% from last year, but uh, just curious because uh, obviously it has been a, a noticeable turn and it doesn't match the 300,000 subscribers. But if you are a subscriber, please, uh, this is the only time I'll ever say this, but make sure you hit the notification bell and all that stuff because uh, one of the things the YouTube uh, analytics people told me was that most of the views don't come from subscribers in the first place, which is kind of weird, which is why I put that poll uh, on the community page, because I'd like to know what you guys would like to see more of, because as much as I enjoy doing interviews, that was the lowest ranked uh, thing. People just don't like seeing uh, interviews for some reason, which, okay. Uh, Move Ruins Movies or Gaming was number one, uh, followed by, I think, like DCS or something like that. Even the Hilo vlogs weren't that popular. So anyway, hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.